When it comes to moving, backing up, or duplicating your WordPress website, this is the kind of thing that can put the fear of God into many, many people. Today, we're going to take a look at two completely free WordPress plugins that make the process considerably easier. We're going to put them head to head, see what they offer, and see which one we think is the best solution for you. Today we're pitting all-in-one WP migration against Duplicator. Both free WordPress plugins, both with millions of installations, so they are two great options. My name is Paul C. This is WP Touch, the channel where I help you create beautiful WordPress websites. If this is your first time on the channel, please consider subscribing and smashing that bell icon below to become part of the WP crew and be notified every time new content is added. So for this example, we're going to take a simple WordPress site up on one of my servers, we're going to take a duplicate of that and we're going to move it to another location. We're going to start off with all-in-one WP migration. Now for this example, I've already gone ahead and created a backup through my server. So what we're going to do is we're going to use all-in-one WP migration to start off with. Then I'll reinstate the site to exactly as it was before we actually installed any of the plugins. Then I'll do exactly the same with Duplicator to make sure that we have an even playing field with no remnants left over from either all-in-one WP migration or from Duplicator. Okay, so I'm going to jump over to my dashboard and it's going to get rid of all these extra bits and pieces which are not needed. And what we've done is we've already gone ahead and installed all-in-one WP migration. And we come into that, we have three options available. We have export, import, and backups. For today's example, we're only going to concentrate on the export and import options. The backup is slightly different. So what we're going to do is we're going to come into export. Once we're inside there, we have a very simple interface. You can see we have an option at the top that says find text and replace with. We can go through and add multiple options there if we want to. So we could replace things like usernames and things along those lines if we want to. We don't need to do that, but the option is there if you should need it. Next up, we've got advanced options, which allows us to omit different things in our backup. So for example, we don't want to transfer over the spam comments, or we might not want to export the plugins. We can just tick any of those boxes that will then not include those in our backup. That's the most important thing. It will not include them. Then finally, we have the export to. If we click on there, you can see we have a range of different places we can back up to. So if you want to back up regularly to Dropbox, Google Drive, and so on, you could do that. Great if you have larger websites and you need to have somewhere online that securely stores those backups. For this example, we're going to stick to the file option. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to leave everything unchecked. We're just going to choose file and let that do a simple backup. So we click on there, that'll go through the process of doing the backup. Once that's completed, it'll tell us it's finished and allow us to then download that file. Obviously, if you're using something like Dropbox, Google Drive, you're going to have slightly different things. You're going to have to link that through to your account just to make sure that your files are saved in the right location online. So there we go. You can see it now says we have to download our file and you can see it's a 46 megabyte file. So I'm going to click on download. That'll go through and you can see that now downloads the file. Now, what you need to be aware of at this point is it has the extension of .wppress. This is the extension that associates it with that particular plugin. So don't change that. You need to make sure it's in that format just to make sure it'll work with all-in-one WP migration. So it's not a zip file or anything along those lines. It is a specific file that works with all-in-one WP. Okay, so there's that side of things done. So we'll close that down and we've got our backup saved now onto our computer via file download. Now this opens up one question. If we're using a proprietary file, this WPPress file, how do we use that then to put a copy of our site somewhere else? This is slightly different to the way the duplicator works. We now need to go to our new platform, our new hosting site, if we want to do this sort of migration side of things, and we need to install a clean copy of WordPress. Now, there's multiple ways you could do that. You could go through FTP and upload it, or if you're using cPanel and you have the normal installer in there, you can simply install a clean copy of WordPress directly inside there. And that's the method we are going to use. Obviously, if all you're doing is taking a backup and you want to import it back into the same site, you just literally come through to the import option. Once you're in the import option, you'll have the option then to just import your file from. You see, we click on there and all of the same locations, including file, are available. So I could click on file, for example, and then we could go through, find that file on our system, import it, or we can drag and drop it if we want to. That would then put that backup directly over the top of this particular version of our site. For this example, we're going to migrate the site to a different domain, different everything. Okay, so once we've done that, we're going to open up a new tab and we're going to go through to our 
hosting account and install WordPress. So to speed things up, I've already gone ahead and downloaded and installed WordPress. All I need to do now is come to the plugins and come into add new. And then once we've done that, we can go to the migrations. We can search for that. And there we go. There's our all-in-one WP migrations. So we'll install that. So once we've activated that, we now have the option on the left-hand side. And we're going to come over and we're going to choose import this time. You can see we get the same options. So we can come through. We can choose to import from. As you can see, we've got all the same options for where our files reside. We'll choose file because we saved this to our local computer. So we're going to click on file. That'll go through and we can now choose where that file is loaded and saved on our computer itself. Click on the file and click on open. That's going to go through the process now of uploading that. Now, depending upon your internet connection, the speed of your server and the size of the files that you're uploading, this could take a little bit of time. Once it's completed, we can finish the process. So I'll just pause it, wait for this to complete and then carry on. Okay, there we go. We've now hit 100% and we are pretty much good to go. So you can see it says now it's going to go through checking any compatibility problems and then give us any kind of errors that we might have. So you can see that we've got import process will override your website, include the database, media, plugins, and themes. Please ensure that you have a backup of your data before proceeding to the next step. Say my backup is PHP 5, but the site you're importing to is PHP 7. This could cause the import to fail. So it's always worth checking to make sure that the file you're exporting from or the server setup is the same as you're importing to. We'll simply click on proceed and then we can make any changes afterwards. So this is going to go preparing our blogs, go through all the entire process. And once it's completed, show us that it's all been done. And there we go. So we've now got two things that it says we can do. First of all, we need to go and make sure that our permalink settings are completed and updated. We need to make sure we do that, save that twice. Finally, we can go through and review the plugin if we want to. If we find this is useful, I always recommend going to review it because it gives good, important feedback to people that might be considering using this themselves. So if we click on the permalink settings. That will open up a new window and allow us to log in. So let's go ahead and do that. So I've gone ahead and logged in. And all I need to do now is come down to my settings, down to my permalinks and inside my permalinks, making sure that I've got the right permalink that I want selected. I'm going to hit save once and save a second time just to make sure that everything is confirmed. So our permalink structure is now completely updated and everything is in place. So if we come and take a look at the site, we'll see we've got our new site all done from our migration options. So everything is in place our entire site. So it is very, very painless, very simple and straightforward. The only step that you have to be comfortable with is obviously go through the process of installing a fresh, clean copy of WordPress and installing that plugin for the whole process to be completed. Other than that, it's very, very simple. And obviously, if you were just using this to make a backup and then to re-import that backup to a, maybe a corrupted site or something, that's even easier because you don't even need to go through the process of installing a fresh copy of WordPress. You can simply just use the plugin, use the import option, and then overwrite all of your data with the backup. So that's all in one WP migration and how we can use that plugin to actually go through and migrate our site from one server to another. Very quick, very easy, especially if you're also doing different domains. So that's pretty cool. Now we're going to move on and take a look at how Duplicator works. So this is slightly different and I'm going to reset the site back to what it was before I put any of these plugins in and then we'll go through the Duplicator process and we can then compare the two to see how easy they are and how the process of actually migrating your site works. So let's do that. Okay, so we're back on to our completely restored, cleaned up site. All we're going to do now is go through and download and install Duplicator. So as usual, we do the install now option on there. Once that's completed, we'll activate it and we'll take a look at the options that Duplicator provides us for actually moving our WordPress website. So let's activate that. Once we've done that, we'll have a new entry on the left hand side, which allows us to go through and go through the process of using the duplicator. So there we go. Duplicator is now installed. We have the option on the left hand side. And you can see we've got three different options in there. You can go pro if you need to. But to be honest, I've been using uh, duplicator for many years now to move sites that I've developed on one domain to a different domain or a different hosting account and so on. So you don't need to go pro, but obviously you want to support it and get the extra features. If you need those, that option is there. And the same with the WP migration tool. So what we're going to do is we're going to come in and we're going to say we're going to, go to packages. Now, this might seem confusing, like the tools and the settings and so on. You don't need those at all. Jump straight into packages. And from there, you can see it currently says, well, you have no packages. Now, a package is basically just the installer file and the backup of your entire site database and so on. So don't let the terminology be something that confuses you. It is literally just two files, a gzip file, which is a compressed version of your website and the installer file that you use to install it onto your new hosting account. So what we're going to do is we're going to say we're going to create a new package. 
We click on there. Once we've done that, it'll go through and you can see it's got a couple of different options we can go and set up. There's three stages to this, the setup, which we're in at the moment, the scan, and finally the build. So if we take a look, you can see it gives it a name so you can put whatever you want in there. By default, it puts in the name of the domain and also the date that you do this. So you can change that whatever you want. For most use cases, you can leave the storage and the archive options as they are. You don't need to make any changes in there. The installer is where you can go in and set up some basic information about your new location for your particular website. So if you're moving this to a different server and you want to use a different database, then you can go through and set up that information inside here. So if you've done that, you can use this. But as you can see, everything is based as being optional. So you don't need to put any information in there if you don't want to. So we're going to leave that blank. We're going to click on the next option. Once you've done that, it's going to go through, scan our site, give any error messages based upon the size of the files, the size of the backup it needs to make and so on. So if you have a much larger site, this is going to take longer. You might get a couple of little warnings on there. But again, in general, I found even though it warns you to say that this is a large sort of backup or you have large file sizes available or long string names, most of the time that should work flawlessly anyway. But if you're trying to migrate a very large website up into the gigabytes, then you might need to look at the Duplicator Pro because as you can see, it gives us larger file sizes that we can work with. So it's one of those things depend upon your needs. For most users, the free version should be more than enough. Okay, let's click on build. That's gonna then go through the process and build the package out for us and then give us the ability to download those two files, the zip file and also the installer file. So we'll let that go through the process of build our package and then we'll come back and see what we need to do next. And there we go. There's our package all set up. You can see we've got installer and archive. It tells us how big that archive is. And if you want instructions on how to use this, you can see we've got a help section underneath. Now I generally find that the installer and archive are separate files. It's just an easier way of working. So I'm gonna do that. Installer first, we'll download that. And then the archive, let that come through and download. Once we've done that, the next thing we need to do is go through and find a way of uploading the files to our new server. Now, I generally tend to use FTP software, but if you use something like cPanel, you'll normally have some kind of file manager tools available inside there, which you can use a nice, simple visual interface. For ease, I'm going to use that. I'm using cPanel for this example, so you'll see exactly how you can upload the file, but use whatever method is the easiest for you to upload your files. So I'm going to jump over to our file manager and as you can see currently there's nothing inside this folder other than the CGI bin folder so we have nothing installed on this domain. So we're going to upload those two files and we'll run through the process then of installing this into our new setup. To do that all we need to do is click to upload and that allows us to drag and drop the files onto our system. So we're going to upload those. Let those go through the process of uploading. Once we've done that, we can then run through the process of creating our new duplicate website on our new domain. So there we go. That's all uploaded. All we need to do now is just jump back in and take a look. So you can see there's our files already uploaded for us. So what we need to do now is go over to our domain and we can then run the installer to go through the process of installing and configuring our website. So here we are, we are at the domain level. So you can see we've got the installer file and the zip file. So all we need to do is click on installer and that'll start the process. And you can see we're now back into duplicator, this time on the other side of the process where we're going through and actually installing this. It's gone through and checked our archive. We've passed on that. Any validation is passed on that. Options we can open up and you can see there's some options in there. Again, we don't need to deal with these. We can leave them as they are and let everything go through. It's pretty much painless. We say I've read these and I wanna to go to the next stage. That's now gonna go through, extract all those files to our server, take it out of the zip file, and then we'll go through and finalize this install or this duplicate copy onto our new domain. And there we go. Now I've already gone ahead and created a database for this. So I'm just gonna simply put in the details onto there. Then I'm gonna click on test database and that'll just check to make sure that everything is good. As you can see, requires passed and this is good. So we've connected to our database. We're gonna click on next. That's going to go through and say, run the install of these settings. We're going to say yes, because we've passed everything. So we'll say OK on there. That's going to go through, install the database, and then comes up with any additional information. So you can see we've got new settings. We're going to leave those as they are, because that's pulled that from our duplicate site. We don't want to replace anything. We don't want to deal with any options. We just want to duplicate our entire site. That's been pretty much done. We'll hit next. That's going to process the data replacement. As you can see now, we've got the same kind of thing again. We've got to log into the admin section, make sure that we delete all those files that were transferred over for the backup, and then also go through the process of updating things like our permalinks and so on. Click admin login. 
Once we've done that, we can then log in with our relevant details. Let's simply hit login, and that then will go through and just allow us to log in, and we can just go and update those permalinks. Here we go, we're into the dashboard, and we're just going to come over now quickly into the settings section, come down to our permalinks, and once we're in there, we'll just hit save, just to make sure, hit save changes on there. And you can see now we've got some almost complete, we just need to remove some additional files that are part of the duplication, so we say take me there to do that process. Once you've done that, you can see remove installation files now, we'll hit on that, let that go through, remove anything that we don't need, and there we go, we are done. So let's just take a look at our site, and uh, we'll say visit our site, and we should find that everything is exactly in place the way we'd expect it to be. So there we go, is our site all transferred over. So there we go, that's all in one WP Migration versus Duplicator, two plugins that do very similar things for WordPress, both pretty much free. So what do you think? For me personally, I think all-in-one WP migration is easier in certain respects, but you do have to go through the process of installing a fresh copy of WordPress, which isn't particularly difficult if you're used to doing this kind of thing, but it is quite a complex step, quite a time-consuming step if you are new to this type of thing. And obviously, if you don't have that ability to go into the cPanel and simply install it from there, which is just a couple of seconds to deal with. On the flip side, Duplicator does the whole process where you don't need to do that, but you do need to be able to log into the cPanel and create the database that you need. If you're not comfortable doing that, again, it could be a roadblock. For me personally, I think both of them have their merits, their strengths. I love the simplicity of all-in-one WP migration for the whole process, other than, like I say, the WordPress side of things. But I've been using Duplicator for many years, and I find that a process that's very quick, painless. Would I swap over? Certainly, in certain circumstances, I can see all-in-one WP migration being a great tool, especially with that whole backup process. Linking those two, two things like Dropbox and so on, becomes incredibly useful. Well, what are your thoughts on this? Do you use all-in-one WP migration? Do you use Duplicator? Do you use a different alternative tool? Let me know in the comment section below. I'd love to get your feedback on what you use, which one you think is the better of the two, and could you see yourself swap into either of these if you use an alternative solution? Speaking of the comment section, if you enjoy the video, give it a thumbs up. If you didn't, give it a thumbs down. That's perfectly fine. But let me know why you didn't like the video in the comment section below. It helps me create better content for you moving forward. Well, my name is Paul C. This has been WP Tuts, and until next time, take care.